This is Dr. Sage, bringing you a rousing discussion entitled The Essence of Health. What is the essence of health? And in talking about the essence of health, we'll be talking about the essence of healing as well. But the essence of health, how do we know when a person is healthy? I mean, what happens? What's different about them? Nobody knows. They got lots of energy. <laughs> they got lots of energy. Okay, lots of energy. That's an, and they're happy. Okay, happiness is part of it. Okay. Enthusiastic about life. Their body feels good. That's a good one. Well, that that's not so much the essence of health. Not how you tell. You know, that's a very subjective thing. Anyway. Okay. But uh, yeah, these things about having energy, having enthusiasm, feeling good on, a, on their own personal subjective level, that's the main thing that you know yourself, which is the essence of health, that you feel good. Now, you have some doctors who will tell you, well, you can't tell it. If you feel good, that doesn't say anything. You might be struck down at any moment by one of these things from outside, you know, that will attack you and drive you down. Or it might just be festering there inside right now. And even though you feel good, well, you know, what they're, what they're drumming up business is what they're doing. The, if you feel good, you're healthy. In that moment that you're feeling good. Now, if you're not feeling good a few moments from now, in that moment you're not healthy. So the feeling good can change back and forth depending on what's going on, what's happening around you. Uh, what the stimuli are, what you're thinking of, all kinds of things, back and forth. And yet you can still be considering yourself really healthy, even though at a particular moment you might not feel good. The essence of health, I'm going to use this point of view, not to say that anybody else is wrong in what they've said at all, but this is so that I can discuss this from a certain point of view and from a certain Puna point of view. The essence of health is strength. The essence of health is strength. This does not just mean muscular strength. We often is just associated with muscular strength. The essence of health is strength because the essence of illness, which we have to know also, is insecurity. And this is why we have words for illness such as infirm. Infirm basically means unstable. And instability is one manifestation of insecurity. And the attempt on the part of the body to straighten itself out, to heal itself, to do something, even if it's sometimes clamping up on an organ or even producing sometimes what we call disease because it, the functioning is not, is not very good, it's an attempt on the part of the body to create a sense of stability, security, and strength based on what it believes in that moment, based on what it's got to work with. So it's looking for strength. It's trying to, to build either protection because it's fearful of something. It's trying to, to control something you know, because it feels itself or the world or other people are out of control. And so it's trying to grab on and hold and create a rigidity So it's often trying to create hmm? firmness within. a firmness within, that's right, infirm, that's right. <laughs> trying to create some kind of a rigidity that impairs function, and it's a false kind of strength. It's the best it can do at that moment until it learns otherwise, or it has the help from somebody. So even disease is a healing symptom, if you look at it that way. It's an attempt on the part of the subconscious to create greater strength. But we want to get to some, some true strength here and get out of this kinds of adaptations that are used that don't work very well and produce what we outwardly call illness or not feeling good. Okay. The essence of health is strength. When, well, we can talk about four kinds, let's, let's break it down to four kinds of strength. 
and we'll create an esoteric basis for this. We can call these fire, earth, air, and water types of strength. These fit kind of well. Fire would be spiritual strength. Now, what can we term spiritual strength? Another term for strength is power. Strength is the ability to, to do something. Power is the doing something or the ability to do something. Strength and power are virtually interchangeable. So spiritual power, spiritual strength, this is something that people can have. Well, I'm going to arbitrarily define that as abundant energy and the ability to direct that energy. If we can use, now we use the word mana for power, but we also use the word mana for, for energy. I'm going to use a different word, another valid Hawaiian word for the energy, for this biophysical spiritual energy that fills us. Uh, same one that the Japanese use, it's ki. Kea. So spiritual strength is the development of ki. The, uh, the ability to be aware of it, to intensify it, to direct it, to have it flow here and there, spread out, radiate, do things for you at your conscious direction. That is spiritual strength. A person who has is direction of their key. Notice I didn't say control of. That's the ill person who's trying to control. A person who has direction of their key is spiritually healthy in these terms. And it's valid to use the word spirit, because when we talk about a person, we say they've got a lot of spirit. There's something there. Well, that, you know, that person has a, a strong spirit. We're, we're re talking about something which is energy and yet more than energy. We're not just saying they have a lot of energy, but they've got a lot of directed energy. Well, that's what the key is, directed energy. And someone who has abundant directed energy, abundant key, and knows how to direct it well, and does it, is spiritually healthy. Earth relates, of course, to physical, physical strength, physical body strength. Now, we, as I say before, we often talk about the physical body in terms of muscular strength, but there's got to be something more than that. A, a strong liver, okay? a healthy, strong liver, there's not muscular strength there, it doesn't apply. What does apply? Smooth, harmonious functioning. So with the physical body, a strong physical body functions smoothly and harmoniously. All parts. Strong muscles in lifting and doing things like that function smoothly and, and harmoniously. You also have a quality of endurance for some kinds of muscles, you know, where it's not so much the lifting strength that's involved as it is the endurance kind of strength. They may not be so big, but they can last, do a lot of work over a long period of time, but they do that when they're functioning smoothly and harmoniously. If they stop functioning smoothly and harmoniously, it doesn't matter you know, how tough they are, it's not going to work. The strongest man in the world, if he gets a crick in his back, can't lift. Okay? So there are other things, the body as a whole has to function smoothly and harmoniously in all its parts. When that's happening, a person is physically strong. Physically, at that level, physically healthy in these terms. Air is mental. Mental strength. Well, what would mental strength be? Oh, before I, well, no, that's okay. We'll keep on this. Mental strength. Mental strength would be the ability to direct your thoughts. The ability to consciously choose and decide what's going to be in your mind. What kind of things you're going to, to say, what kind of things you're going to think. That would include words, imagination, everything there. The ability to direct that. So one part you're directing the functioning of your body. The other part you're directing the, the, um, the key energy through your body. Here you're directing the, the thoughts. You can think of that as thought energy if you like, but you're directing the thoughts of your mind. And we can use that as a measure of mental health, if you like. Obviously, a person who has these reflexive 
uh, uh, reactive kinds of, of behavior mentally, uh, and it seems to be out of control completely, we wouldn't call them mentally healthy. But what are often called neuroses and psychoses and compulsions and obsessions, all of those things imply stuff out of control, out of direction. And the people do certain things in order to try and get a direction. And so some of them flip out into another reality where they can control things better. Okay. Some people withdraw into apathy, don't think, speak, or relate to anybody whatsoever. You know, people use all kinds of different ways that are illness coping methods only because they haven't learned a better way to do it. That's all. That's the only reason. I'm working all the time with people who have tried these illness coping methods, and they come to me and I teach them different, more effective coping methods. One's working from this idea of health, and they, what happens? As soon as they learn them, they give up the old ways. They don't work as well. They use the new ones, and they're so much better. Anybody can learn them. But what's happened is that the way, the nature of society is, this has not been a thing which is taught to everybody. doesn't mean it couldn't be, but it isn't. You'd be amazed, maybe some of you, how many people don't even know that it's possible to choose their own thoughts. It never enters their mind. You like that one, huh? <laughs> so, mental strength directing your thinking. Then we have emotional water. Emotional strength. Well, emotional strength, if we're following the same kind of format as we've been following for these others, we're going to have to define that as directing your feelings. Deciding how to feel. Now some people would say, well, that, that sounds contrived. You're putting out a false front. Not at all. The people who are putting out a false front are the ones who are, have turmoil inside and have got this nice, bland, smiling exterior. You say, wow, that person's never upset, that person's always looking good, always smiling, always happy, you know, real sweet. And inside, you know, they're, they're mad or they're aching or they've got an ulcer or they're hurting or something's happening. And what will happen with those kinds of people is when the stress level reaches just a little bit over what they can cope with, it's a blow up. And so that's not a real choosing how they feel. They're choosing what they're showing. That's different. I'm talking about the ability to actually decide from one moment to the next to move from depression to joy. That might seem like a huge jump, but it can be done. You just might start out with moving from you know, slightly upset to moderately happy. <laughs> okay? If your belief system will accept that much, okay, it is a lot easier to do, perhaps. But with a shift of your mind, and a shift of your body, and a shift of your energy, interestingly, all those three things at once, you can shift your feelings. Because the feelings are a reaction to all those other things. Feelings, emotional feelings, don't exist by themselves, apart from. They are effects and not causes. So by directing those other things, you can direct your feelings. So a person who is emotionally healthy is one who can choose how to feel, and feels appropriately, and consciously. This is strength. This is health. The essence of health is that strength. How do you get there? The essence of healing, then, is to help somebody yourself or someone else, is to help them be strong. Now the kahunas recognized this so well, so long ago. The word for a doc, kahuna doctor, as we would know it now, a word for a kahuna doctor, a kahuna healer actually, is kahuna la'au lapa'au. As a matter of fact, somebody uh, wrote a book with that title, which was talking about old kahuna healers, 
Excellent book. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. But Kahuna La'au Lapa'au. That was a Kahuna healer. La'au Lapa'au. Well, if you look it up in the dictionary or you look up someplace, you'll find that La'au means medicine and Lapa'au means to cure. Okay? To cure by medicine. Well, you know, same thing as today. No. Not quite. Not quite. You have to look a little deeper than that. La'au means strength. The Hokunhuna idea was that anything that was used as a medicine gave strength. And what did they use? Primarily symbolic stuff that sometimes also happened to have some vitamins and minerals and stuff like that in it. But that was definitely secondary. It was the symbology of what they were doing which is the greatest thing. They were strengthening the person's body by strengthening their mind, by helping them to believe in something. But the word la'au means strength. Lapa'au, lapa means to animate or energize. Au means a current, flowing current, like a current of energy. This is used also to mean the whole thing means to spread out. And what they're doing there, because illness is something where the person is trying to clamp down and hold themselves steady and getting themselves sick in the process, the whole process of healing that the kahuna was doing was let go, release, free, flow that energy, balance it all over the body and let it flow and radiate outward and the person be healed. Make them stronger by having more flowing, more resiliency. So the essence of healing is to help somebody be strong. In practical terms today, if you are working with anybody, including yourself, on a healing level, you know, at any level of healing, the most important thing to begin to help them do is make them feel safe. Help them feel safe and secure. The word for to heal, now this is, this is a healing process here, but the word for to heal in Hawaiian is ola, O-L-A. Wonderful, wonderful word. Because it means, has one meaning there, to penetrate with light, the roots. But it means life also, and it means to heal, and it means to save, and make safe, and savior, and salvation. All of which I have that same root, to make safe. It also means support, by the way, hola. And even monetary support, if you, you can translate it in that way too. You want to make somebody healthy, give them a lot of money. <laughs> well, the concept is if a person feels secure, they're going to be well. And they realize that even when a person was in lack, they felt a great sense of lack, they felt unstable, they felt insecure. And so you support them in a way that will give them what they, what they need to live with, and a lot of their illness is going to go away. The whole idea here is, again, help them feel safe, help them feel secure. In yourself, for healing yourself, it's that same process which is involved. First of all, get yourself feeling safe and secure somehow or other using your mind using your key energy using your your body relaxation using all of these things to feel safe and secure first and that's how you can begin the process that's why in some of the work we do the first thing we concentrate on focus on is peace peace of mind peace of body peace of spirit and then once we get that state of peace where you will automatically feel more secure, then we start moving the energy through. Start some programming processes, things like that. Because if you start to get a process of increasing strength in a person who's holding on because they're feeling so insecure, they're going to defend up even more. And you're going to have to build up so much energy to try and blow through that and in the process blow their mind possibly, scare them all to pieces. 
and maybe they'll keep the the the, uh, the good effect afterwards, and maybe they won't because they were so scared. Oh, be nice, be gentle, make it quiet, bring them to a state of nice peacefulness, and then zap them. <laughs> no, zap them nice, zap them gently, good energy. Okay. Get that flowing through. But peacefulness first. Happiness, you know, happiness is also a way of helping to create strength through laughter, through joyfulness, through sharing uh, your good feelings, because when a person is feeling happy, they're feeling secure. When they're feeling secure, it's easier to feel happy. But sometimes you can startle them into happiness and they'll start feeling more secure. That's why Norman Cousins, everybody knows, was able to use that as a portion of what he was doing for self-treatment. Laughter. And a lot of scientists have come up, well, what's happening in laughter? And they went through all the musculature and what was what was occurring on the nervous and muscular level and, and how that might have affected it and all that kind of stuff. It was just loosening him up and helping him feel more secure, that's all. That's all. So penetrating with light. You know, light, you find that symbol of light, la means light. And la ao, and la pa, there's a lot of symbols in the roots here for light. Light is a double symbol in Huna. It means two things. It means energy, and it means awareness. And so you look at a fire, and the kahunas would see two things there. They would see energy that was able to, to do something, create an effect. They would also see awareness because it allowed you to see and understand. So it was the two things there, understanding or learning, which for them was the same thing, knowing, and the direction of energy both, not just one or the other, not just one. Both things involved. You are strong in the way that we've been talking about strength. When you can direct your energy, when you can direct your thinking, when you can direct your feelings, when you can direct the functions of your body. And in order to do that, you've got to have some awareness. It's not just having energy, which is health. It's directing it. It's not just having good thoughts, which may come in and out, depending on circumstances. It's producing them. It's directing them. You've got to be aware in order to do that. You've got to be aware when the kinds of thoughts you don't want to have in your mind are coming in so you can direct them out. You've got to be aware when your energy seems to be flagging and failing and falling and going down or getting stopped up or blocked. And be aware enough to start re-energizing and redirecting it again. You've got to be aware enough to remember you've got the power to do it. There's a big one. But you can. Just go through life saying, every day and every way I'm getting stronger and stronger. Cultivate a positive attitude for your mind. A positive attitude which will help create so much health works because so much of the illness and insecurity is produced by a feeling of helplessness, powerlessness, not knowing what to do, not believing one can do anything. And so these coping measures are tried. By developing a sense of power, of your own personal power, by developing a sense of strength on all levels, regardless of what kind of situation happens, regardless of what happens, You'll be able to direct something. You'll be able to direct your energy. You'll be able to direct your thoughts. You'll be able to direct your functioning. You'll be able to direct your feeling. Something you'll be able to do, you won't feel helpless. The positive attitude is the one that says, there's always something that can be done. It's not the attitude that says, well, everything's fine, everything's hunky-dory, and ignores stuff. No. It's the attitude that looks for the good in anything, and if you can't find anything, figures out a way to put it in. 
That's a positive attitude. So you direct your mind by keeping and cultivating this kind of positive attitude. Your body function? Oh, your body is so responsive. All you have to do is talk to it. All you have to do is give your body a picture to follow and it'll start following it. All you have to do is talk to it and say, hey, body, function better. Get stronger. Pick up those little cells over there. Get a little calcium growth over there, reduce it, get rid of it. And you, you, keep, you tell your body just how you want it to feel, just how you want it to act, just what you want it to do. And you tell it, like I said, with words or give it images. And the body's wonderfully responsive, but you've got to mean business. When you're doing this kind of thing for strength, you don't say it once. You keep on telling it, and you keep on coaching it, and you keep on teaching it until it does what you want. And it will if you keep up with it. But if you say, you know, body, I want you to feel real healthy, and then you don't feel real healthy, you know, instantly, and then you get mad and say, that doesn't work. I don't hardly know anything that works like that until you're very evolved. Okay? You know? You work at it, you learn it better and better and better until it works well. And it does, your body will respond. In our family, we've used this kind of system, as I've explained elsewhere, to do away with colds. Unimaginable in our family, they all happen. Because everybody has learned to say, what, cold? No way. They say, no way, body, no colds. Get nuts to that stuff. And they don't happen. You can direct the functioning of your body, and that's strength. And like I already told you how you can direct your feelings, direct your thoughts, direct your spiritual energy. You can create health, create a safe world for yourself, inside and out, increase your strength, you'll be increasing your health, there's no limits, no limits. So every day in every way, get stronger and stronger. Aloha.